I'm Steve Balderson. In 2014, I directed two feature films within the span of three months. Helltown, which was a ridiculous soap opera horror film, which was co-directed by Elizabeth Spear, and El Gonzo, a mysterious drama about a love affair between a gay black man and a straight white woman. This addendum to the Wamigo trilogy is a little glimpse into my experiences promoting the release of both films in 2015 at the same time. That's a feature film of the festival. All great films. But the winner is Helltown. Okay, so seriously, like on the airplane, <laughs> um, thank you so much. This is an amazing honor, and this I love this place. It's been really hard to get Helltown programmed into horror film festivals because it's not specifically a horror film. The first festival that we were in, we won Best Film, and uh, Amanda won Best Actress. Helltown is a horror comedy soap opera slasher TV show movie. <laughs> you know, when you're first starting out in your career, whether you're an actor or a filmmaker, director, writer, anything, you know, festivals are a really great place to get started. So what movie are you guys here to see today? We are here to see Helltown. On one hand, they are this really wonderful place to begin your career. It exposes you to filmmakers, resources that you just aren't aware of, and to a community that maybe not you're completely plugged into. Um, it's instant feedback. It's this whole new world when you're beginning your career. But on the other hand, for filmmakers and actors, when you're climbing the ladder and you feel like you're getting into these really great projects, you, you know, your expectation of the festival is different. You know, you start to expect to win or hope to win, um, which changes the festival experience, um, as well as it sort of represents... Um, you know, as, as you start to worry more and more about distribution and things like festivals start to fall a little bit by the wayside, which is unfortunate because even at its top level, it is an unbelievably useful resource and connection tool for any filmmaker. Doesn't it? A little bit. Um, I'm just going to go right to you guys and open up to questions you have or comments or experiences. What did you enjoy about Helltown? Tonight is being presented by the Austin Horror Society. Uh, scream out there if you're part of the Austin Horror Society. The world premiere of Helltown. And go director Elizabeth Spear, please. Um. <laughs> I didn't know she wanted to come down here. We're making her. This is her city. Well, she isn't, you know, it's not her city. It's all of your cities, but... It's her city. Okay. <laughs> Elizabeth, yeah, so we'll thank you for this opportunity to work with you and make this movie. It has been a treasure and a highlight of my life. It's a highlight of my life. Oh my gosh, we're A donut again. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna try just right, to make well, sure I still can. What was your favorite scene in the film? Favorite scene? Oh man, I would say the donut scene. <laughs> Fantastic! I laughed till I cried. Love it. Rainy's extraordinary. Yeah. Campy. Yeah. Hilarity. Yeah. Always your favorite death. It's not. My favorite death. I would say the donut. That was that was a great. By far the most deeply popular. perverse, uh, <laughs> profoundly horrific <Yes>. death. <laughs> Dear ones, we've reviewed your film and despite its obvious qualities, we've decided not to include your film in the selection of our 2016 festival for a very simple reason. It doesn't fit the genre we're promoting. 
We thank you for your interest in our event, and we wish you much success with your movie. Please do not hesitate to submit your new films for another edition of the BIFFF. Sincere regards, Freddie and Chris, the program directors. That was for Algonzo, and I don't even remember submitting Algonzo to that festival. But at some point, I must have. Okay, so this is my editing room. And this is the hard drive that is going to keep the footage. This is Karen Black's favorite room in my house. This jacket, okay, yeah. is the Armani. Yeah. Or I have the Anna Sui one that has more of a flare. No, I like this one better. Okay, great. So when the when the effects and things were off before, you, you remedied it and then created a DCP from from that film? What? So the effects were off before, right? Like they were missing it off when I finished the sound mix? Like But then I fixed them before. Yeah, so you fixed them and then you created a DCP off of that? Huh? Oh, okay. I won't smoke that many. There's not enough time. We're not going to be there that long. Never any time to smoke. Never enough time. There's never enough time to smoke four packs. I think we should stand, right? And I'll just say, everybody who's in the movie, come up, and we'll take turns introducing ourselves so we don't have to worry about who's there and what their names are. Um, and then, uh, then he has like, I don't know, four or five questions that he's thought of to ask. Cinema-wise, we are a first-run art house theater, yeah. so we show a lot of independent films and foreign films. Um, and then we do special screenings and repertory screenings. And okay. so, you know, like, like we just showed American Werewolf in London yeah. last weekend Great. and um, the weekend before that, Psycho. And and yeah. next month we're going to have Galaxy Quest. So we do stuff like that. Uh, how did how did Helltown, how did this whole genesis start of having Helltown here? Well, Steve Balderson emailed me and yeah. said he wanted to show his movie here. Yeah. And I'm not an idiot. So I yeah. said, yes. This is of course. Are you guys doing like Days of the Dead or anything like that? Um. I don't know. I mean, I've talked to them about doing some, but um, sorry, um, nothing is set yet for that. My name's Sarah, and I play BJ in Helltown. Um, Helltown was the first film I've ever been a part of, and now um, I basically just go around the country with Steve and run his merch table uh, at all the film festivals and conventions, and I'm having a blast. I guess I really am good at it. We found that out in Charleston when I was helping him with his table. And he said every time I walked up to him, I was handing him a handful of money. So from now on, I get to run his merch table. I have the tremendous honor of introducing to you the award-winning filmmaker and all-around badass, Steve Balderson. Thank you for being here tonight. Yeah, we're about, it's 7.30. When did we start, like 10 after? Yeah. Or so, 15 after? Yeah. So at 8.30, I have to be back in there to do the Q&A afterwards. Steve Balderson, please come out, sir. Thanks, man. How you doing? Those of you who didn't get a Bonito Trilogy documentary in the lobby, there are three, so please do take one when you leave, if you'd like. And there's plenty of other merch out there. I yeah. saw that there was some uh, pink donuts for everybody. There are. Please have a donut. Yes. In the lobby. How has the film festival circuit affected your career, and how has it changed over these 20 years? Now they're pretty much a marketing tool, right? So when you go to them, um, the purpose is to just build awareness of your movie uh, and share it with people that otherwise would not have had the chance to see it. I will be 35 with the two movies in the t-shirt. Did you know about what Trish like that in Carry the boxes? Shoot that and help me carry the boxes. I, oh, get, I get it now. We have plenty at home. Home. But sometimes that's really great to have fans orchestrate screenings because then you don't have to um, do it yourself. Oh, I got a um, another um, rejection letter for Helltown. This one comes from Blake Myers, who runs the Buried Alive Film Festival. Hello, filmmaker. Thank you for submitting your film to the 2015 Buried Alive Film Festival. 
Unfortunately, we have not chosen to screen your film this year. We had a record number of amazing entries and only two days to program. We sadly have to turn down many, many great films. Best of luck to you and your crew with your other festival entries and thank you for keeping the horror genre alive through your artwork. Delete. Oh, and then we've got Helltown Hellions, blood and gore, boobs and booty and blood galore. Cool. That's great. That's the opening cheer. All right, awesome. <laughs> What are you making? I'm fixing the nurse G-string. <laughs> of course. <laughs> She'll eat you and beat you, drag you straight to hell. And at this point, it's only going to be to be filmmakers inside. Right. It's always so confusing right before you have a screening anywhere, really. Did one guess this fallen James? Yes. So I want to say... He's with LA Weekly. Yeah, of course, of course. So as soon as Tina gets here, I'll open up the doors. You guys can cocktail out there, okay? Cool. Yeah. Is that fine? You yeah. chill? Yeah. yeah. Right. And then we're going to have um, some girl in a cheerleading uniform nice. announce me and Elizabeth to announce the movie. Is that okay? Yes. Who do I need to tell that to? Um... Jason, I guess. Okay. I mean, do you need more than one mic? No, 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 no. In fact, we may not even need a mic because our voices are so loud. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Hell Town, Hellions, Blood and Gore, Boobs and Booty, and Blood Galore. Go Hellions! <laughs> experience this tonight. It's our first showing in Los Angeles. In the oldest sound stage in Hollywood. Ow! Where they played Birth of a Nation for the first time. Really? In this room. Wow. This was DW Griffith's sound stage. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Um, Helltown came about, uh, well we can get to that in the Q&A. Stay afterwards for the Q&A if you have some questions. Keep your wristbands on if you're going to go to the Helltown Burlesque Show at the <laughs> afterwards. We'll get you in for a discount. So don't rip them off as soon as you leave. Um, enjoy the food, enjoy the drinks, enjoy the show, and the bluffs and the gore. And the laughs, and um, all the casts that are here tonight, raise your hands so that people can see where you are nearby. Guys, so from the bottom of our dark- Bloody hearts. <laughs> thank you for coming. Enjoy. Trish, this isn't funny. Yes, Lynn. I just wanted to say that I really did like Blaze's chest a lot. Oh, you did? Okay. Well, let me introduce you. Matt, Lynn Lowry. Hello. Uh, go down and give her a kiss. Now. Oh. <laughs> there we are. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. We'll see you later. Thank you. Hotel Velas, darling. A lot of the cast is here, and um, we made this show as a tribute to Helltown. It's going to be really hellacious. And I don't know if some of you have not been to a burlesque show before, but the rule of thumb is the better they dance, the more noise you make, and the more noise you make, the better they dance. Something bad happened, babe. Thank you guys for coming. How time for This is how you can get free airfare, always. Is sign up on a credit card that runs through an airline. 
and then use it for everything. And if you have a friend who um, wants to buy a car, let them use your credit card and then have them pay you because then you'll get the miles. And so if you're traveling this much, um, it actually is useful to not have to pay for airfare. Um, and I haven't actually paid for an airplane ticket in years. It defied logic. Okay. So then the whole thing in, in the pork burgers at the Bellevue, whatever it's called. So we call for pork burgers. Are you doing pork burgers today? No, we're not doing pork burgers. We call for pork burgers. Are they doing pork burgers today? No, we're not doing pork burgers. What was it? You, about the fifth time you called to say, are you doing pork burgers? One of them said, well, they're so popular, we just don't, aren't going to do them that often. <laughs> and it's like, so then when I asked this last week when we were there and had pork burgers, she said, oh yeah, we're like when we do pork burgers, we sell 80 or 100 a day. And then we sell out, so we can't do them again. And then I we'll said, "We'll buy more pork." Right. And I said, "She said, well, if I put pork burgers on the menu, would you come more often?" I said, "We would be here at least once a week." God. And yet they still don't do it. It's insanity. So the only thing, I mean, so it's like, I think that that exists in our society. This this notion of of if I'm too busy then the answer is to cut back on whatever. And I, the only thing I can trace it to is I don't want to work that hard. I don't want to work that hard. I mean, I've had people, even here at Dymax, say, why don't you take some time off? You're so busy, why don't, why don't you take time off? Because there's lots of opportunities. And I don't know, it just, it makes no sense to me. But that's the only thing I can make sense of is it's something about work ethic. Well, how do we not have any of that? Who else do we know that doesn't have that problem? Or is it genetic or learned? Well, it's both genetic and learned. We, it's hopeless for us because my German mother and what was her saying? Um, idle hands are the devil's workshop. I remember that as a kid. You know, if I had too much time on my hands, you need to get busy with something. Or the devil's gonna come get you? No, the it, idle hands are the devil's workshop. We're gonna, my hands, I'll get into trouble if I'm not busy. So yeah, all my friends are dragging Maine in their cars. I couldn't even have a car because I had piano lessons to take. I had the church to be the orchard organist for, you know, I mean, I, my days were scheduled ad infinitum. When well, I was 16. But then why do you, Scott and I? Because we raised you the same way. Be productive. Be Contribute. Be productive. All right. Got to go contribute now. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you want to add to that? No. All right. Bye. All right. I have very little patience with people who don't have a high work ethic. It's like, I'll tell, it's Sunday or Saturday, and they're like, how's your weekend going? I'm like, well, I don't know, I'm working. What do you mean? On a Saturday? On a Sunday? Yeah, I work every day. What else am I gonna be doing? Playing golf? Most people are lazy, and they don't wanna work. Clark's right. Our society at whole, as a whole, is a whole. <laughs> they don't wanna work. If they did, they'd work longer. They wouldn't retire at 65. You know, my grandfather had an office until they basically made him leave when he was like almost 90. <laughs> so, you know, and Clark will too. He'll be going down to that office and working until he's not able to get down there anymore. Nobody is buying DVDs anymore. So you might as well give them away or sell them fast as fast as you can. This whole trilogy right here marks the crossroads at which everything went from film to digital and how it is today, essentially. And it's a really cool thing because it sort of like historically documents that point in time in this, in this uh, industry. The reason why I hate that fucking tape is because it, when it sheds off in like little itty bitty pieces, you get stuck all over you like glitter and you can't do anything about it. Tuna.
that is the best oops, breakfast if you know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to the Colorado Horror Convention in Denver, Colorado. And we're driving. We've been on the road how long now? Uh, we left at 9. So about. Then we stopped at 11.30. Yeah. And then we got back in the car at like 12.15. Yeah. We've only been driving for three hours? Yeah. Jesus. Once we get to the border, though, it seems to go by quicker. The well, Colorado border. At least there's something to look at. Yeah. I mean, the mountains come up yeah. and stuff. Shave your hair. Hey, what the hell? Look at that. And I guess I, I'm to be in that pose. <laughs> well, actually, actually, right here, you can't see it, but the glory hole is right there. <laughs> We're promoting um, Helltown here. Two mini concert in the, in the middle of the middle. Which one do you want? Doesn't matter. Oh, you right. get a whole corner. This one might be easier because if I do any, like, then you'll need them in the middle. Yeah. To, like, do a demonstration. So, yeah, I do the application or whatever here so that way I can. Yeah. Okay. That works for you. Yeah. I was in Seattle and they did that, except it was around the corner. Mm. But it was really difficult because somebody would come in and say, you know, like, um, you know, you you ruined my childhood. You you ruined my nightmares. And I go, what? He's like, you ruined my nightmares. Oh, okay. Can I help you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was horrible. I was like, I'll take one of those. How much? Twenty five dollars. All right. So you've been you. This is your first time doing this, but how long have you been working with this convention? Six months. And never before. Never. We started this. John and Scott and I started this March twenty third. Yeah. You like it? Yeah, I fucking love it. How many festivals and conventions you've been to prior, though? Others. That I've vended at probably thirty. Yeah. What's the best experience you had? Setting this one up. Yeah. Yeah. What's the worst? Going to the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That name sounds really familiar. Are you on my like, Facebook page or something? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I've weird. been around making movies for twenty years. That nice. name sounds really familiar to you. Did you ever ask me to watch your movies or anything? I don't think so. Did you know Karen Black? <laughs> uh, I worked with her a hundred years ago. Yeah, she was in a couple of my... She was in a movie with you. Actually, I did a movie with, um, I think it was her husband, Casey Carson. Yeah. Casey Carson. Mm -hmm. Weren't they married? Yeah. Yeah, I did a movie called David Holtzman's Diary. Cool. And when you have a table at a convention, you have to sit at it all the time. So there's no time to eat or go to the bathroom. <laughs> It's a very nice accessory. It is. I think I should have one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, look at the colors. They're, they're so amazing. What kind is she? Bone constrictor. Oh, nice. I've submitted my short film, The Peripheral, to mm -hmm. over 200 film festivals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've gotten into 71, uh, but we've been rejected by 95. So. Do you, really count them? do you like do you really look at them though when they have rejected you like do you like consciously pay attention to who has rejected you yeah because i put it all on the spreadsheet because i have a spreadsheet for every festival that i've submitted to and i also give myself notes in case you know i want to submit to that festival again okay you know if i've had a bad experience in submission with that festival uh i will definitely put a note in the spreadsheet that yeah this festival is not worth my money next year or next time no one's doing your marketing for you right you have to do it yourself mm -hmm. so i mean if you do it <laughs> so what i'm thinking is while i'm in there testing right i'll have you run around and yell Helltown starting and then like run over there and then Helltown is starting and then like run over there and, oh, Helltown, Helltown, Helltown. <laughs> whatever whatever you do is great and then um go into the theater <laughs> <laughs> and just sit down like yeah exactly right because then people will know if they, if they wanted to go see it that oh right I did want to see that it's about to start and then I'll, I'll remember to go otherwise how will anyone know yeah Got it. Well, how long starting in the main theater? Halloween. Helltown is about to start in the main theater. Yay, Helltown. Answer me, Mama! Which is what I thought. You're no help. <laughs>
and Jake Jackson, the special effects makeup artist. I would like to know, before you guys ask us questions, what was your favorite death scene? Just out of my own curiosity. Uh, arrow through the glory hole. <laughs> well, yes. well, I'm flattered. <laughs> so I read the script, and I was like, Steve, I, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm totally on board. I was like, so, because originally it wasn't a penis, it was just that we were gonna like slit his throat, and then Steve's like, we got this idea. <laughs> I cut the dude's dick off. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, do you want me to cast a paint? What do you want me to do? He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, I already know how, we're just gonna buy a fake one, pre-made, and you can do whatever you want to, to make it look real. So, <laughs> the most awkward thing I have ever gotten in the mail was <laughs> a prosthetic penis with a note from Steve saying, Jake, here's the dick. <laughs> Paint it however you'd like, just make it look real. <laughs> so I, I, it's okay, I'll sever the end of it. And I was like, well, how am I gonna airbrush this thing? I've gotta, I, am I gonna hold it or what am I gonna do? So, love the hands. <laughs> Trust me. So I took a screwdriver and I just slammed her up the wrong, uh, the other end of it. Oh, man. And so I airbrushed and everything like that. And I was like, okay, well, I better send it to Steve and, and Elizabeth, the co-director. So then, you know, prove it. So here I am, I, sex, I text this penis and sex the penis. <laughs> I sex the penis to them. And Steve's like, uh, Steve's like, that's disgusting. And Elizabeth's like, oh my God. <laughs> but I would always, I'd always text them pictures of whatever, you know, prosthetic I was working on. So, you know, they knew what I was giving them. And it was always just like, oh Jesus, oh God. So the funny day, the thing is, is the very first thing that I shot for special effects was the dick. <laughs> so we're out there and it's hot and humid and we're out there and Casey Chapman's running around, you know, with his butt hanging out and all this stuff. And we get everything set up for the shot, you know, after he's up against the tree and Steve's, you know, I, okay, that's what I want you to do with the, the the shears and all this stuff. And he's like, all right, Jake, I just want you to drop the dick. <laughs> just, just drop the dick into camera. So I was like, all right, cool, I can do this. I put a little blood on the end and I'm like, all right. I'm like, I drop it. I drop it the first time it goes, boing. <laughs> this far away from the camera lens and Daniel Stevens, the cinematographer was like, oh, I got off my lens. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my favorite aspect of the horror genre is um, how Hitchcock used to do it. You know, building the tension and the suspense leading up to the event. Ladies and gentlemen, we are beginning the tattoo. It is the Bride of Frankenstein, and she's getting put on Sarah. She played BJ in the movie Helltown. So guys, come over right now and check out the tattoo. Dream Bent Studios over here in the corner. Now I'm gonna present the awards for the um, best films of the film festival. The winner is Helltown. Okay, don't leave yet, uh, because we also have a, a certificate for the Quick Film Budget uh, Budgeting Service. Uh, you get that free on uh, your next feature. And uh, also, you have a non-exclusive distribution deal, if you want it, from IndiePix Films. Cool. Woo! All right, thank you. thank you. Okay, so today we found out that uh, Helltown got into the Portland Underground Film Festival, and Immediately, I have to um, correct the website, and then I have to make a thing on Facebook that can become, or go into Photoshop and make the, uh, the, the cover banner for Facebook so that everybody can put that up. Um, I have to send an email to the cast and crew. Then I have to um, make a Facebook event page, post it to Instagram, which prior to that, I have to go into Photoshop and build the laurel wreath because I designed our own laurel wreath with some bloody knives, like in this sort of like traditional way. Then I go to um, maybe do a press release. I don't know if I need to right now, um, but in the coming days, I need to contact the Portland newspapers and magazines and punk zines and blogs and send them the press release so that they, and an invitation to also um, review the movie um, prior to the screening, this is what it's like being um, an independent filmmaker without a PR firm. And I have to get ready for uh, Cabo next week. We leave for the Los Cabos International Film Festival on, well, I leave Tuesday, everybody else leaves Wednesday. Like 10 people in the crew just to clean the 
El Festival Internacional de Cine de los Cabos otorga el premio protagonista que excelencia en actuación 2015. Un aplauso muy fuerte a Iwan McGregor. We've really fallen in love with Mexico. We love your culture, we love your people, and the extraordinarily talented, creative people that this country produces into our industry is, is quite staggering. So all of that adds up to me being very, very, very happy with this award. I'm very grateful and thank you. Thank you, thank you. How are you? I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving us the amazing, right? Yeah. The round circle now. Yes, totally. All of this area. You know, you, you meet somebody that you don't know, you, you don't know, you're only going to see them for a few minutes. Right here. to acknowledge um, Antonio. Antonio. There he is. Stand up. Do you want to come? <laughs> to have a hotel like Hotel El Gonzo that welcomes art and celebrates art, um, the whole idea of what happens at that place in that hotel um, is such a great thing that that is so rare in this world that it was really, really great to become part of that and then also showcase that. What inspired you to choose a person with that kind of mind for the movie? Uh, our mystery novelist, Agatha Christie. There is a, a story about her where she disappeared for a period of time and was left at a hotel. She was found at a hotel in England. And um, people don't know, did she have a nervous breakdown? Did she have amnesia? Or was she having an affair? Or what was she doing there? Wonderful movie. It's, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's, it's very powerful. The two actors are just uh, fantastic. Thank you. So congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Give you a little foreshadowing. Gracias. <laughs> really enjoyed it very much. And we wanted to have a picture. Okay. Yes. You in the middle. You're, 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 you're the, the star. Okay. It can be really good. Say. Yeah. Okay. What a wonderful movie. Did you enjoy ah, it? Congratulations. And I, uh, I come here very often, but you know what's very interesting is that the, the, the concept. You know, you ask what's wrong with film festivals today, and I've been to a lot of them. This is what I've learned going to all of them. And I've been to them in Italy and Portugal and, and England and across the U.S. I've been to uh, Fantasporto twice. Uh, two of his films have been in Fantasporto, the big fantasy film festival in Portugal. And they're in like February and it's cold as hell. <laughs> it's miserable. And, 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 I, and I said to, to Mario, the, the, the head of the film festival. I think his son is now the head, but back then. I said, why do you have it, why don't you have it in summer? And he said, 
We have it now because we're trying to draw tourists when in the down season. You know, so a lot of film festivals are held in the off season because they're funded by convention and visitors bureaus who are trying to get people to fill hotels when the tourist season isn't on. So you got to remember that a little bit about some film festivals is is the primary interest of the film festival may or may not be directly about motion pictures. You know, it may be about tourism. El Gonzo, in my opinion, is a very European style film. Um, I'm, I'm not that much of a film historian, but Godard, Fellini, I don't know. There's elements to it. It, it is not your typical Hollywood action-packed um, film. And I, when I first saw it, I was just struck by that, and yet I was mesmerized by the film. My attention was just held. So, so it was interesting to watch this Italian audience with it. They loved it. They just were rapturous. It was palpable. And, and I thought, well, is that because of the Italian subtitles? <laughs> I was trying to figure out why, why were they so much more responsive to it than the USA audiences had been. USA audiences were okay too, but it was noticeably, the, the mayor of this town had tears in his eyes. Non guys, guest, guest. Allora, questa è la prima, giù ci sono le altre. Ah. Understand? No. Ok. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, aspetta. Uh, come si dice? Fra oh, yes. Come si dice la chiave? Yeah. Fra keys. Keys. Oh, ok. Yes. Oh, Gigi, yes. Steve Balderson. Oh, yes. Hey, nice to meet Welcome you. Welcome to Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Hello, hello. I'm his father. Yes. Clark. Larry. <laughs> Larry. Nice. Nice to meet and this you. is our producer, nice Jennifer. We <laughs> like a small introduction. Hey. Nice work. <laughs> Buonasera, benvenuti a questo weekend, l'inizio del nostro weekend finale della dodicesima edizione del Salento International Film Festival. Come previsto abbiamo fatto il cambio stagionale. In particolare iniziamo dal regista, Mr. Steve Bogerson, che è il video sul palco. Volevo intanto chiaramente ringraziare il sindaco che ci aiuta e ci supporta e volevo fare appunto un ringraziamento però And this is a sign that uh, an, an international festival is uh, very important on a cultural um, of course a way because it brings people together so uh, let's just forget about wars and differences and work together as one one people one person basically all the same all yeah. together Grazie mille. so this was thank you Three weeks after we made this movie, everything that you were about to see was destroyed. Allora, loro hanno completamente, totalmente finito. By Hurricane Odile. Uragano Odile. And when I was editing the movie, uh, it was like looking at a ghost. 
Wow. And it means a great deal for us to take the legacy mm -hmm. of this land and share it with the world. Quindi è particolarmente importante e rilevante per loro condividere proprio con il mondo. The last thing is, it's about finding who we are, each of us, mm -hmm. together. And what does that mean for each of you and all of us as one? Thank you so much, Steve. Grazie mille. And we we'll see, we'll see you after. Thank you. I always watch just to see if it starts okay. And then once I know it's playing, I go out and smoke. It's playing. Como se llama? Antonio. Antonio. Yo es muy... I don't know how to say. I, I'm happy. Contenta? Sí. Yo, yo es contenta. Yo estoy contenta. because at the place where I was learning about myself and learning about people that I was with in the world meant a great deal to me. Your movie touched my soul uh, in a deeply way. Now, Paris is a very good city. I think Paris and Rome are, are the best city in the world, but maybe Rome is better. You know why? Because of us. That's the difference between Rome and Paris, you know what I mean? Alessandro International Film Festival. Vi ringraziamo ancora una volta per essere stati così attenti. E quindi vorrei invitare qui innanzitutto il vicepresidente della scuola del liceo scientifico. SIF 2015 e il ganzo di Steve Balderson. Il film che ha lasciato proprio lacrime di, 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 di emozione a, a, per i nostri spettatori. Steve, non lo your cast. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> They definitely agree, you see, and that's an important thing. Thank you so much, Steve. We're going to read the motivation of the jury first. Let's do that. Sì, I think I'll translate to you later, because it's too complicated. Per la straordinaria capacità poeticamente espressa di prospettare come chiavi per la sopravvivenza e per la vita il recupero della propria interiorità, l'accettazione delle proprie inclinazioni, a prescindere dai ruoli sociali. Per il messaggio di speranza che in qualunque momento ognuno può reinventare ex novo la propria esistenza, dimenticandosi di chi è stato per chiunque prima di allora, confidando nell'altro proprio nello sconosciuto e nel diverso, nel nome della gentilezza che sempre si accompagna all'assenza dei pregiudizi e che è il nocciolo di qualunque espressione amorosa. Per il ruolo di pacificazione ancora che assume la natura, che si tratti di pietra, alberi, oceano, animali, e per la magistrale sintesi tra suono e immagini che punteggia, senza soluzione di continuità, l'intero racconto cinematografico. Per quel rimando uterino, infine, non si poteva non farlo in un paese che si affaccia sul mare, all'oceano, in ogni dolorosa e ormai superata memoria che dilava per vivere la vita che si è scoperto di volere sul serio. Incredible honor. We hope this is just the beginning for you, because the movie is great, your work has been amazing. It's been appreciated by, by not only the jury, but I had people coming to us say, please, please, make them win, it's the best. <laughs> Grazie mille. So, Grazie. I think that's a great success for this beautiful film that has brought us from the United States. Thank you again to the film El Ganso. Let's go on. 
e cominciamo a premiare la migliore attrice di questa edizione. La pronuncia sarà orrenda e spero che non si...